I'm Ryan Newman, and since I started with Indiana Donor Network and Driven to Save Lives, I found out that some people think that they can't be an organ donor. The truth is, anyone can sign up to be an organ donor. Anyone? Anyone? Are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. Anyone can sign up to be an organ donor. So don't count yourself out because somebody's counting on you. Go to DrivenToSaveLives.org and sign up today. But my heart's going to you, Ryan. Love that shirt. The tit, the most unassuming of bird species. The tit is from a large family of small passerine birds which mainly occur in the northern hemisphere. Members of this family are commonly referred to as tits throughout much of the English-speaking world. These birds are mainly small, stocky, woodland species. Some have crests or beards. Just like another animal, the Alba commune pinae, they range from 4 to 8 inches. Many species live around human habitation and come readily for nuts or seed and learn to take other foods. This message was presented by the DeWeather Institute for Climate Knowledge. The DeWeather Cares Knights Tits Kickball Tournament is coming this October and benefits four cancer-related charities. See DeWeather Center on Facebook for more information. And good evening, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the High Side Hustle right here on the National Racing Network. And I just shut off my camera because I'm an idiot. Bert Wojcik, Adam Rubright with you here. Chris Graham, our executive producer. And, boys, it is National Open Week. I, You know, every year I dread the week coming. I love it at the same time because it's one of my favorite weeks of the year. It, it's awesome. We get back with the World of Outlaws not saying Jake Sprint Car Series at the Williams Grove Speedway this weekend. But most importantly, there is $75,000 on the line Saturday night, Adam. Yeah, I can't wait. It's one of my uh, more anticipated weekends of the year um, for the obvious reasons. But why do you dread the week leading up well, to it? Because it's towards the end of the season. It's the end of the, basically it's, you know, the, the last big hurrah we have in central PA for the 2021 but, season and it's kind of it's kind of depressing in a way because i you know don't want the season to end when we get to this point and it means winter's coming and i don't like winter but it's big money season in the northeast it is big, which it is we big can all agree season. yes i mean we got the natio we got the nittany showdown next weekend rolled into the 200 and super dirt week and eastern states and yeah that whole the month of October is probably one of my favorite months of the year, racing wise. Oh, absolutely. Um, and then, of course, you, the annual 
pilgrimage down to Charlotte, but we'll get into that sometime in the month of October. I'm sure. It's coming up, man. Charlotte is coming up. And of course, folks, if you have any comments or questions for us here, put them down in the comment section below. Once again, you can check all the results down below as well. And it's 30 sticker thanks to sean and them with 34 motorsports and also uh coming up on the fredericksburg eagle hotline here in a few minutes we're gonna have the uh i guess you want to call the infield voice of the world of outlaws nos energy Drink sprint car series on dirt vision chase rodman and then just and literally he just got back to me about 10 minutes ago your winner of the super dirt car race up at albany saratoga from malta madness this past saturday night his first career win with the super dirt car series mike mahaney will be joining us it's been a minute since we had the modified or modified guy on here and it this is uh it's a okay with me because that was a very very popular win on saturday night of malta it was and it actually really surprised the heck out of me that that was only his first super dirt car win i thought he had one somewhere else but i might be thinking of someone else clearly possibly should be fun hey, with chase Chris, though as... you know that the uh interviewer gets interviewed so to speak yes and I, I there is I don't think there's a better person that could help us figure out what the hell to expect this weekend at the Winsgrove Speed within Chase because he's been obviously every race with the World of Outlaws. I mean that kind of helps out a lot, but very knowledgeable what he does and I, his pit reporting has been fantastic all year long and yes. um, really uh, really really coming into his own here. But let's uh, while we wait for our guests to come on here, uh, let's uh, let's talk about this past weekend because you and I we kind of took the weekend off to kind of get ready for this, but. We missed some, uh, there was some damn good racing. We'll start a Friday night at the Grove where uh, 21 was king, but not the 21 you think at the Grove. Blackjack Brian Brown finally gets a win at the Grove in a, a heart, oh, okay, a heartbreaker for Brett Marks and what turned into a great race between Devin Borden and Brian Brown. Yeah, I didn't catch any of the highlights. Uh, I was watching all the Outlaw stuff from Eldora, but. Yeah, I mean, from what I've read online, it was a fantastic race. Probably one of the mm-hmm. better races of the year at Williams Grove this year. And to see Brian Brown pull off a win and Daniel Lasowski back in victory lane, it was just a really cool thing to see. Yeah. And plus, it Brian's really been fun. awfully fast the last month or so that he's been in here. Well, Brian, Brian's always fast in here. It's just the Grove is such a hard place to pass and to, you know, do, uh, try and do the stuff he does in Knoxville. I mean, it's a completely different setup. I mean, that's why he does so oh, much yeah. better. I think of a port Mills Grove than what he does at the Grove, but they've been close. They've been knocking on the doorstep at the Grove for a while. They really have. And it finally just yeah. all came together. And unfortunately, as we said, it took some bad luck on Brent part, Brent's part, but wow, did that turn into a heck of a feature between him Devin Borden and Anthony Macri. I mean, Borden was elbows up, and I thought he was going to take them out a couple times. But Devin Borden is really coming to his own, in my mind, anyways. I mean, we said this multiple times that Borden's just, he's just got to kind of hone this this wild side. I mean, I love the wildness, the wild man mentality he has, but he needs to kind of control that down, condense it a little bit. If he can content, condense that a little bit, Borden's going to win a lot of races in PA, but it's got he got to kind of control that that uh that energy that he has yeah i agree um it's almost like jack hodshield kind of got reincarnated while he's alive as devin borden or i don't know if devin just kind of spent his childhood watching highlights of jack and just kind of figured well i want to drive like him which is not a bad thing at all but I think, it, like like you said there, if he just kind of calms down and but still lives on the edge like he's been, he's going to win a lot of races anywhere he goes, really. I agree. I agree full heartedly there. So, uh, once again, congrats to uh, Brian Brown picking up the win. Um, and we'll, we'll keep in the 410s here as we go on to Seals Grove, where another – Born born burner of a race. Danny Dietrich, Anthony Macri going at it at the end of that race there. And man, who I from following along on Twitter, um, it seemed like Dietrich was dominant car, but it seemed like a lot of traffic got in his way. But Macri 
Macker's just good on these half miles this year. I mean, these big sweeping half miles ports, you know, Grove, he's good. He, he just, he, yeah. he's getting better and better. It seems like. Yeah, I agree. And, um, honestly, I wouldn't be surprised to see Macri next year, either on the all stars or the outlaws. Honestly, I mean, the money's there, the talent's there. He gets better each and every time he steps off of the porch and goes out racing. So I wouldn't be surprised to see if maybe next year he takes like a Brock Zierfoss approach and just dips his toes in, see how it goes, maybe hang out for a while and then maybe stay on the full year, maybe not. But I, I, I see a lot more traveling in his future next year, to be honest. Yeah, I, I, I think so. Um. I, I, I think so too. Oh. Perfect. And uh yeah, I, I think so. But hey, good on Macri, an earned uh twenty grand and a good year for Seals Grove too. I, I think uh I think you're right. Macri could be either side of the ledger. I think he could be on the outlaws, could be all stars. We'll have to wait and see. I wish he stay in central PA because I think he's definitely one of the best hopes for the posse in the next couple of years. But there's a Oh, without so, a doubt. So this is going to be a debate we're going to have to have at some point is that is money in central PA still good enough to stay at home or is going out on the road good enough? And we'll have that conversation here probably fairly soon. I think probably for the off season. I, I think it's one yeah, that we had. I would imagine so considering the fact that we now know who the first rookie of the year contender for next year is going to be. So it'd be interesting to see. I mean, certainly we're not going to have another year where Macedo won the rookie of the year award, but he was the only car. So yeah, you know, it certainly there's going to be another car out there. Just all depends on who and where, and it, it might be a complete blind blind side as to who comes through or what have you. But I don't know. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Well, ladies and gentlemen, he is ready to go here. He is uh, our first guest here tonight <clears throat> is the infield voice with the World of Outlaws NOS Energy and Sprint Car Series. And if you think my orange Crocs are outrageous, you got to see this guy's vans. I mean, those red vans are just as probably outrageous as my Crocs. I don't know, Chase. What do you think? Is it the Crocs or is it the vans that are a little more outlandish? And we'll give it a second here. I think Chase has gone a little bit potato on us. But just a wee bit. Just a wee bit. But hey, that's what happens when you bring up Crocs in a conversation, apparently. Yeah, way to Crocs go. Crocs ruin everything. Soiled it. Crocs. Uh, of course they do. But wait for it. Wait for it. It's coming. It's coming back. Slowly but surely. Slowly but come on. You can do it. Ah, oh, we're getting there. Ah, oh. we're, uh, we're getting there as we wait for uh, Chase Rodman to get back with us here real quick. It'll should work it work out here in just a moment. By the way, Chris, you're gonna. I told you you're gonna hate me on my drink choice tonight. Came out just today, Hershey Porter's, and there All he right, is. Now, guys. You're you there. there. What's up, is. buddy? All right, How are you cool. Doing Chase. Now, what let me bring back Did my you hear anything question. I said about the red bands? Absolutely no. nothing, because you went full potato. Nothing. Okay, yeah, sorry. I wasn't on the Wi-Fi, so I'm having a rough day. The, the email that I was sent was in the spam, and then I wasn't on the Wi-Fi, so it's been a little bit of a rough day here. So, um, hey. yeah, dude, I don't know, Bert. You're the only guy I think that can run the Crocs and uh, make them work, man. I... I'm a croc hater. I'm not gonna lie, but um, you know the red vans. I was work. like I was trying to say there before I went full potato. Um, the red vans they're pretty destroyed, so I don't think we're gonna take them out there this week. Um, no, I know they're iconic. I know, but uh, probably for Port Royal, I'll have some new ones. Ah, oh, damn it! All right, well at least you have new ones for Port. <laughs> but hey, you know, hey, welcome to the hustle, buddy. Glad to see you. Glad to talk to you. And uh, yeah, are you ready to come in to Pennsylvania again for the National Open? Yes, I am ready, man. Uh, I went last year. I didn't know what it, what to expect at all because, you know, before last year, I really wasn't – I had no, like, idea about PA sprint car racing, right? Like, I was – I knew the outlaws and I followed them around, you know, and I followed them before I started working for them. 
but I know nothing about PA sprint car racing. And then when I went to the national open, I was like, man, these guys are, these guys are passionate. These guys are crazy. Uh, the drivers are very good, obviously. Um, but yeah, man, I'm excited to get back there. And, uh, I think it's going to be a great show. Last time we were there, the outlaws were there. The racing was fantastic. So excited to see how it goes uh, this time around. Yeah, for sure. And uh, before we get into the preview of the weekend, uh, give us a little insight about how you got involved in into motorsports. Um, yeah, so my dad, um, you know, I feel like that's kind of everybody's story was their dad or their parents or whatever was, um, you know, racing or whatever. So my dad actually was a pavement guy. Um, he ran in the NASCAR Southwest Tour Series, which is uh, no longer around. Um, but like it used to be pretty big time, I guess, you know, I see all these broadcasts on YouTube, these old races and whatnot. And like, um, you know, they had the same commentators that the cup series had. Uh, and so he was, he was the champion in that series in Oh one. Um, and I think there was like a, there's a picture on the wall in his office with like all the NASCAR champions from like that year, like Jeff Gordon and like, um, like Ron Cap, like all the champions from all the major motorsports were there, um, in that picture. And so that's kind of how I got involved in racing in the first place. Um, I was a pavement guy for a long time, and that's what I did. And then when I started racing, um, I did some outlaw car racing, and that was on dirt. And ever since then, I kind of, you know, kind of pushed the pavement stuff away. It's not really as exciting to me, and um, I hate waking up early. So that's the problem with pavement racing. you got to wake up at 7 a.m. and do 12 practice sessions, and that's not really my uh, cup of tea. So um, that's kind of how I got started. Oi, yeah, that doesn't sound like a lot of fun. But, hey, we are doing no. a lot more fun stuff now with the dirt side of things. And, uh Let's get into it, man, as we get ready to preview the uh, National Open. Uh, you know, the Outlaws have kind of owned the posse the last, no, what is it, uh, four, six races, something like that in PA? Uh, they, they've been, yeah. it's been very, very tough for the Outlaw or the posse to win in PA. My question is this, have the posse kind of backed off or kind of fell off a little bit, or are the Outlaws just getting better? And I, that's a tough, tough thing to say, because like I was saying, like, I don't, I haven't really followed PA sprint car racing for super long time. Uh, so it's tough for me to comment on, but I do think that the outlaws are very strong right now. I think that's what we all thought when the season first started, this is like one of the best groups of guys that the outlaws have had in a long time. And I think next year it's going to get even crazier with the competition. Um, but I really think that like where PA is at right now, there's a lot of young guys that, have bright futures that are just still like they're still trying to put it all together right like i mean you obviously got lance like the the elder statesman of the group but like i feel like macri and um you know like freddie and a couple other guys like freddie's obviously won an outlaw race but like like they, like consistently when the outlaws show up like they don't have like you know five to ten guys that can can you know contend in the top five every time like there's those young guys that are very very close like macri um but maybe this weekend could be his way or could be his weekend because obviously he got just got that win with the All Stars back there. So um, I think the PA guys like in the next like two to three years or maybe even year and a half or whatever are going to be very very good, more um, more competitive. I, I I'm not saying because I know you guys are diehards, right? But I feel like um, <laughs> you know here in the next year year or two, like I feel like the PA guys are going to be really really hard to beat because those young guys are really starting to come up and start trying to find their strides, you know. Yeah, yeah it's like, it's like a your favorite sports team going through a rebuilding year. Yeah, I've been rebuilding yeah. for a couple of years. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, because <clears throat> um, what I like I said, I don't know a whole lot about the history of PA. Like, I mean, like Fred Raymer, and um, I mean, who? What other guys like that they retired, like Brian Monteith or whatever. Like, he's not racing anymore. Like, there's those guys that have been around Stevie for Smith. so long that like now they're not there anymore. So it kind of there's like those those holes that need to be filled by these new guys, you know. Yeah. Who are some of the guys you were looking at? You know, I know you mentioned Macri there, but what, what about some of these like upper like a uh, guy like Devin Borden? I mean, he's been really turning a lot of heads the last couple of weeks since he got hooked up with Hefner. Um, you know, a lot of people are really high on Dylan Norris coming up here. And even, you know, you, you look at maybe somebody like Aaron Borden or uh, um, Bollinger, sorry. Like he's been having some nice runs in that Westbrook car too. Are those some of the younger PA guys you're looking maybe to take that next step in the next year or two? Yeah, I mean, there's quite a few of them, I feel like, um, that are, are up and coming for sure. Like, Devin is definitely, I feel like, the one that is on everybody's mind right now. You know, he's in arguably the best stuff out there. 
uh, with Hefner. Um, it's just he doesn't have that seat time quite yet, you know? Like, I mean, he's had good runs and he's gotten some wins this year, but, like, I feel like once he, you know, hopefully, like, they keep him around, right, to, you know, keep him learning. You know, obviously, I think when Hefner brought him on, he knew that, like, hey, like, this is going to be a long time. Like, this is this is going to be, like, instant success. Like, this is going to be mm-hmm. a working thing that I've got to try and stick it through, like, the big wrecks or the bad nights. Like, he knew when he hired a young guy from Washington that runs Skagit and Grays Harbor and all these bull rings that like a guy transferring to the half miles, like it's going to be a learning process. So um, as long as Michael Hefner b- keeps Devin around, you know, for a, another year or so, I feel like he's really going to be um, something special. And he already is, you know, but um, I think he's going to be even better than he already is. And then, like I said, Aaron Bollinger, a guy that I had never heard of pr- prior to this year. Um, I feel like he's been very good um, recently, especially I feel like at Lincoln's like kind of where he's been yeah. very good. Um and I, I mean, there's some other guys out there that have been showing some promise, like Justin Whittle. You know, I mean, he won that that Grove race earlier this year and um, was had a strong run at one of the races I was watching at Port um, not too long ago. So, um, but I, I, to be honest with you guys, like when you're on the Outlaw Tour, it's so hard to like follow along and like keep track and watch all the highlights and and keep track of all the other racing going on, just because like we get done, we get done racing. Like the next thing I do is like I go tear down the cameras and help those guys, you know. Uh, strike, they call it, you know, tear everything down. And then we're on to the next one. I try and watch the highlights on the next drive, you know, but like, it's so hard to like keep up. And I try my best, especially with the PA stuff, because we're out there so often, you know, it's, it's, it's very crucial for me to be able to keep up with that stuff. Well then let's switch over to the PA side of things uh, or the outlaw side of things. I should say, you know, you look at what Brad has done this year. It is kind of, almost a Donnie kind of domination we're seeing from him this year. I mean, this is the kind of stats that Donnie's puts up, but Donnie hasn't put those numbers up this year. It's been Brad, but it seems like the last couple of weeks, David has really started to uh, kind of close in on him and uh, it, we're in for a nice battle. And you're coming into a track where gravel has kind of owned the Grove the last couple of years in all honesty. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, obviously the Grove is we've, you know, it's been so well documented. That's kind of like Brad's, like the thorn in his side all these years. Like he's never like been able to be good there. Um, and David usually is very good there. Uh, but this year when we went there for, I think it was Summer National or the Morgan Cup, one of those two, I don't think he was in the top 10 either night um, in the two cars. So I don't know if they've got some stuff figured out since then. Um, Cause David definitely knows how to drive around that track. He knows how to get it done. It's just, you know, Cody Jacobs and him, like that meshing needs to get a little bit better for the setup and things like that at that place. But I think out of the outlaws, I think the guy I'm going to be watching the most um, is either Carson Macedo or um, James McFadden. They've just been so very good recently with the outlaws. Like I think McFadden's on a streak of like 19 top tens in a row and like eight of them are podiums and 10 of them are top fives. And he's won there before with the outlaws. Um, I just feel like that, that you can't stop that momentum and that confidence that he's got right now. So McFadden's going to be one I'm watching for. And then Carson and Phil Dietz, uh, obviously Phil knows how to, you know, set the car, but Williams Grove, Macedo's shown that he can win there. Um, and they've always been very good. I feel like their forte is like being on the half mile track. So I'd say those are the two guys that I'm watching for. And I'm not going to lie. I'm kind of rooting for Logan Schuhart in the, in the throwback car. It's great to see him get back to where he was at last year you know up until the last month or so i mean people were kind of wondering what was going on with the one s car because he wasn't really having the year he had last year you know second in points and all these victories but all of a sudden the last month he's just i don't know what they figured out man but he's been one of the top guys uh, each and every night one person well actually two people i'm going to be watching closely to this weekend is donnie and sheldon Sheldon finally got that monkey off his back, got his first Williams Grove win. And Donnie's been sneakily consistent the last couple of weeks. We, we all know Donnie can win at Williams Grove. I mean, I don't know how many times I've left the parking lot of Williams Grove completely dejected because Donnie won. But <laughs> I can yeah. I can see him having a strong weekend. Same with Sheldon. And one guy that's impressed the heck out of me the last – four or five races or so is Wayne Johnson. He seems like he has like this swagger about him the last like week or two. And he's been having some really strong runs. 
Yeah, man. Wayne, um, arguably the nicest guy in the outlaw pit area. Um, when I first started working for the outlaws, like I never, I didn't know anybody personally in the pit area besides Macedo really. And Wayne was like the first guy to like, you know, be like super cool with me and like, you know, invite me in his trailer and talk to me when, you know, we're just hanging out or whatever. And it's really awesome to see him having some good runs. And it's hard to argue, man, if, if he somehow ends up in the dash this weekend, uh, it's hard to argue he might not get that one pill. I think he's four for four this year in dashes, and he's drawn the number one every single time. Um, but, you know, it's been so fun to watch him lead laps. And then I see all these people. I read the comments on the YouTube highlights, and people are like, who's this Wayne Johnson guy? Is he some new up-and-comer? I'm like, dude, he's been around for decades, right? Like, he's been a full-time outlaw for two years. How do you not know who Wayne Johnson is? It just shows that. He hasn't been running very well, but just recently, like, I mean, the Eldora thing was was unreal there. I mean, I'm not going to name, you know, name these guys, but after the dash draw, they were walking away from the dash. They saw that Wayne got the one. They were like, oh, well, at least it's just Wayne. We don't have to worry, right? Oh. Oh. And I think those guys that Chase Story talking time about, was just, just getting really good there. They, they might have just <laughs> killed his Wi-Fi. Damn it. Oh, just when it was getting good. Ah. <laughs> so that that's a running gag is so Chase, uh Am I so back? I don't guys? think you're supposed to talk. I don't think you're supposed yeah. to talk about that, apparently. <laughs> which which part did I get to? You got to who's going to – you didn't say na- – you were going to say names, but uh, it's only in the dash. And I don't think whoever it was probably was watching just hacked this probably. Right yeah, I don't know. Line. I'm not going to name them by name, obviously, but uh, they weren't too – Oh, my God. This is <laughs> – oh. oh, goodness gracious. This is great. Oh, that – this is – I, I should be laughing at the technical issue, but my what's, God, this, this is just hilarious. This point that this is the story we're at. Oh, man, Chase. I'm struggling. No, no, Chase. This is uh, to me, it's hilarious because whoever is that doesn't want you to tell the story, we're gonna go with that. But if, whoever it is, perfect. Doesn't want, but say we'll go with say this. Wayne Johnson if, sneaks his way into the dash. Right? We all know Williams Grove has been incredibly hard to pass on the last couple of years. Wouldn't it be some shit if Wayne Johnson pulls out a victory at Williams Grove this weekend? Dude, I think that's a place where, like you said, man, it's very hard to pass. So we went from Chase to Mike real quick. Mike's right there. Huh. Well, we'll get this figured out at some point. There we go. We're get we're getting it at some point here. I hope the Wi Fi was the problem. So I'm on the LTE here. I don't know if AT and T can uh, help me out very much, but we'll see. Uh, but like I was saying, anyway, Wayne on the pole at Williams Grove. Uh, it's very. So it seems like every time Mike logs in, yeah, it's kind of so we have a second guest logging in here, trying to get him queued up and it knocks chase out so we'll get this out real quick and we'll we'll get this ended up here because this this is all new to us folks all so brand new to us. we're still working it out but yes uh as you said adam it is taking a good bit to pass and if wayne wins and i want to ask chase this when we get get him back uh am i, I the worst guest in chase in- history no, 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 no. We, trust Brian Walker is Brian Walker is. Oh, geez. Um, okay. Yeah. Our second our guest, guest is trying to log in. So what's in, happening is it's... we have Mike Mahaney. We have Mike Mahaney oh. on next and he's logging in and I think it's knocking you off. We thought we could have it queued up. It's just, it's, it's a little bit weird right now, but I will say this. If, okay. If uh, Wayne Johnson wins, I don't know. I, I, I know you probably can't bring it up, but I don't know if you saw the hill back at the Morgan cup and what was on the hill. I think it'd be a very popular win if Wayne Johnson wins that. If you know what I'm talking about. And I cannot remember what was on the. I remember being at the Hill. I was there. I just no. don't remember so, what exactly. No, so it was, I don't know if you remember Saturday night, the Bear Hill was hanging stuff on the fence. 
I don't know if you heard about that. Oh, right, um, right, right. Now I yes. get it. Yeah. The handlebars. That would be hilarious. And a bike. Yes. That would be such a popular win. <laughs> if, if that I, it would happen. be hilarious. Yes. I mean, what a yes. place it would be for Wayne to get the first win. I feel like that would be like not the place because obviously he ran ASCS for so long and it was, I don't know like really if they went to Williams Grove all that much, but like that would be the last place I would think Wayne Johnson would get his first outlaw win was at Williams Grove during national open weekend. Nonetheless. Yeah, for sure. It'd be super neat, but no, I, I don't know. I, I think Donnie can pull off a win. Um, Sheldon, maybe I'd love to see Logan win. I mean, obviously, uh, right behind me <laughs> but you know it i don't know it williams grove is just such a tricky place man and you, you really never know what to expect when you go in there i mean if you don't time trial good some nights that's game over yeah absolutely um obviously qualifying is so key there uh because like we've seen in the heat races the couple times that you know the outlaws showed up this year um, there wasn't many passes to be made. It was you had to get a very good start, and you had to hope that one guy didn't get down the straightaway the right way, or didn't get through the first set of corners very well, or else you were going to be kind of riding in line there. So uh, I haven't really looked at the weather for this week, and I noticed that it wasn't supposed to rain, so that's good. But I wasn't, sh I didn't see if it was going to be super cold or if it was going to be hot. Um, you know, obviously that plays a big, you know, a, a fact on, I... or, you know, factor on the racetrack conditions. I think I saw the low for Friday night in the like the mid forties and the low Saturday wow, night yeah, like that's right cold. around fifty. So yeah. we're gonna be making some power this weekend. Oh yeah. So, There's probably yeah. gonna be some vapor trails, that's for sure. So according to our boy Peter from the center, who does our weather forecasting here, is gonna be absolutely gorgeous here uh this weekend. They are looking at beautiful temps. It's gonna be mid seventies. It's gonna be absolutely gorgeous gorgeous so we are in for a fantastic summer nationals so let me ask you this before we let you go chase who's an the open winner and who wins the outlaw championship well i mean the second question i feel like is kind of i don't know i feel like you got to go with brad right i mean 120 point lead with nine races left i feel like that's going to be that's going to be tough to, to blow that, you know. Uh, I think David's going to close it up. I think by the end of the year, it'll be definitely under three digits. Um, mm -hmm. But I think national open winner, guys, I'm going to go out on a limb here, and I'm going to go with Darren Pittman in the Speed Lab 39. Ooh. He's ran second at that race a lot. They've had some success here recently. You know, get that seat as much when he does get in the seat. He's more motivated. Um, and I feel like him and Kevin have gelled really well. So I'm going to go 39, Darren Pittman, Victory Lane, first ever national. Wow. You know, Darren was so good at the Grove the last couple of years in the Casey Kane racing car and the nine car. You know, that's a good pick. That is a very strong pick. All right, Chase. Well, we're gonna let you go here, bud. Thank you so much for coming on. Tell the people where we can watch uh, where we can watch the National Open this weekend and how they can get a hold of you on Twitter as well, because you you're, you you enter one content, buddy. Yeah. So obviously, watch uh, DirtVision.com uh, this weekend to uh, check out the National Open. Should be um, a lot of cars there. Should be a lot of fun. Um, and we do have a. Cool, uh, we're gonna have one of those cool. Uh, guests in the dirt vision studio as well which i can't reveal yet so uh somebody you might know from the from the nascar world uh, back in the day so it'd be cool to have him on there i'm not going to name him yet i'm not sure if that's release news or not but uh, obviously dirtvision.com for the national open um and then what was it oh twitter yeah at chase underscore rodman uh go on there uh you know i i try and funny stuff every now and again just you know, keep the followers happy for a while. Kind of quiet, you know, I didn't want to get myself in trouble, but, you know, uh, we're trying to come out with some funny stuff. Ever. So um, I appreciate you guys having me on. Uh, hopefully next time my service is a whole lot better because, <laughs> wow, I, I lost it like five Chase. times and I died, but it was a lot of fun. Uh, 
as I tell everyone, welcome to the shit show. As when you join the high side hustle, it's welcome to the shit show, buddy. Hey, thanks for coming on, bud, and we'll see you. Uh, we'll see you this weekend. We'll see you Friday night. Well, that's what I was tonight. <laughs> no, it's all good, buddy. Thanks, man. There he goes, ladies and gentlemen. Chase Rodman on the way out of here, and uh, we'll go get our next guest on the phone here, and uh, we'll be right back with Mike Haney. He'll be joining us here on the Frederick Eagle Hotel Hotline. Stay tuned, folks. I'm heading out, man. You want to ride? No, I got my car, but I actually really need to go to the bathroom. Dude, are you okay? I am definitely buzzed. Yeah. I think I will take this, and I will take that ride home. If there's one thing every car guy hates, it's cleaning the garage. Do you want to take most of the time and hassle out of that job? Then call Zone Garage of Eastern Pennsylvania and New Jersey. Agnes and her crew will have your garage, shop, basement, or even your porch looking great all the time. With unique patterns and designs, plus the ability to incorporate your logo or any artwork, your space will never have looked better. Installation is done in one day, guaranteed, and Zone Garage offers a 20-year warranty on the top coat. Their coatings are durable, anti-slipped, and impact resistant. Give them a call at 570-856-6067. That's 570-856-6067 for Zone Garage of Eastern Pennsylvania and New Jersey. The tit, the most unassuming of bird species. The tit is from a large family of small passerine birds which mainly occur in the Northern Hemisphere. Members of this family are commonly referred to as tits throughout much of the English-speaking world. These birds are mainly small, stocky, woodland species. Some have crests or beards. Just like another animal, the Alba Commune Pine, they range from 4 to 8 inches. Many species live around human habitation and come readily for nuts or seed and learn to take other foods. This message was presented by the DeWeather Institute for Climate Knowledge. The DeWeather Cares Knights Tits Kickball Tournament is coming this October and benefits four cancer-related charities. See DeWeather Center on Facebook for more information. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back with the high side hustle here. Burt Wojcik, a big, sexy Adam Rubray, and join us now, Lawrenceburg Eagle Hotel Hotline. He picked up his first career Super Dirt Car Series win at the Albany Saratoga Speedway. I'm so used to calling that damn place Malta. I don't know whatever to call whatever. Mike, he picked up his first win at Malta this past weekend. Ladies and gentlemen, Mike Mahaney. Mike, welcome to the high side hustle, bud. Congratulations, man. That was a long time coming, wasn't it? Well, thanks, Bert. Yeah, it, was, it certainly was. It was like my 115th series start. So uh, it took a lot of years to get there and it was pretty cool to get it done at my home track now. I mean, not, not home track where I grew up, but where I'm racing now, it's where we race every week on Friday nights and it is in Malta. So that's why you can call it Malta. <laughs> Very true. Very true. And, and you showed a lot of speed, not just this year, but years prior. And it, it's honestly a surprise to me that it took this long to get a super dirt car win. And for whatever reason, I always thought you had one. Like when I, when I read that it was your first ever, I'm like, wait a minute. Could have swore you had one somewhere else, but you know.
Yeah, absolutely. But let, let's talk about that race a little bit, Mike, because you and Stu put on a great battle on his, uh, and it, it's, the whole of Stu anywhere is tough, and I know you've raced him so many times before. Oh. Let's, let's try that again, as we have Mike uh, got kicked off the internet again. Oh. You know, it's fun, fun times as always here. But no, Adam, you're right, though. I, I really thought this Mike one had is most certainly this. not my fault. No, no, this one ain't. We'll, we'll get it figured out right, folks. Hey, Chris, is that for cheers to you, bud? I mean, that's. Oh. Uh, We'll get it figured out here. But Adam, you're right though. I really thought Mike had a couple super or had at least one super dark card series win, but it's so hard to beat those guys. Yeah, it is. I mean, Shepard and Friesen, they're just so goddamn good. I mean <laughs> oh, there he is. Oh, I can hear you now. So, there we are. So so we thought you uh just completely ignored the question. And <laughs> No, hey, I listen, just I got a phone call and it like cut out and I couldn't hear anything. Oh, all right, so I'm using my beautiful. phone. Sorry, anyway, I don't really use good, computers buddy. much anymore. Uh, listen, this, everything <laughs> we do pretty much is off the phone. We can do that's a beautiful thing about this technology is that we can do it like this, and I love that we're able to have like these the video chats and all this stuff. It it it, it shows where we're at. But Adam, uh, go ahead with your question again, buddy. Yeah, I, honestly, I mean, congrats, obviously. You've shown a lot of speed, not just this year, but last year. And I, I was honestly really surprised that it was your first ever Super Dirt Car win. I mean, I thought for sure you had one or two at least somewhere years past. <laughs> yeah, we we had we had a lot of speed throughout last year, but we were, it was kind of a building year for us with uh, engines and chassis and stuff, and kind of just updating our equipment, and then and then it kind of transferred into this year. We're racing so much, run like our eighty third race that it's really hard to keep up with the cars and we've been doing better and it's, you know, it's showing on the track once in a while we get to, you know, racing too much and, and I overlook a few things and fall out of races. We've had a lot, a lot of times where we were leading and broke and, or just, you know, running pretty good and broke and which everybody does. Uh, you can't control it all, but you know, we try really hard to, control everything we can in the shop and it just it's it's an incredible amount of work we got done with that win and uh we stayed up all night partying having fun and then it was like oh crap we got to go to devil's bowl today and we woke up went to breakfast at a truck stop diner and then uh rolled in to devil's bowl with a dirty race car and started maintenance it at the track you know it just we we still timed first in our group and won the heat but then in the feature uh i tagged the wall got a flat and uh you know went to the back and we worked on it but i was tight at the end and just wasn't one wasn't as good so um one of those deals where we were so excited about the win uh that we really tried to you know take it in and enjoy it because you don't have too long to enjoy these nights in racing it's uh it's one of those deals where we're already we're just already going into getting ready for the Fulton 200 and Dirt Week next week, and there's all these cars that got to be ready and tires and uh, service on the truck and trailer and there's just so much to do that you know before you even get on the racetrack that it's kind of overwhelming. But uh, you know, luckily I got a lot of great help in the shop and uh, guys are coming in and you know putting in the hours so that we can get there. Yeah, absolutely. It, it, there is nothing wrong with the truck stop diner breakfast to celebrate. It means you did the night right, absolutely one hundred ten percent. But you know that race itself too is it's it's surprising because of how good Stu is. I mean, Stu's everywhere, and you know, I, I, let's be honest here, he's the best modified driver right now. But to hold him off, that's got to make that win a little more special, especially you know how many battles you guys have, whether it's Super Dirt Car or on the Super Series. You guys battle almost everywhere you two meet up. And to be able to get one off him, that's got to be really rewarding for you. Yeah, it's one thing that where I race, I pretty much race against Stu uh, almost every night. <laughs> we run against him on uh, 
every Saturday night at Fonda. And then a lot of times when he can be at Malta, he's there. And then uh, uh, when we go to the Short Track Super Series and the Super Dirt Series, he's at every one of those. So, uh, yeah, we're always racing him. And it, it's like you don't get any gimmies. Um, the two nights at Fonda that Friesen wasn't there, we won this year. Mm -hmm. um, the, every other night he won. Well, actually, I think Jack Laner got a win and uh, Ronnie Johnson, but maybe maybe one other guy. I don't know, but you can see the point. It gets kind of like he's the guy to beat. You're right, and uh, so that show racing back and forth with him. Um, well, first of all, when he lined up beside me on the final restart with 18 to go, it was like, damn. All right, now I gotta. I'm really gonna have to step it up here because you know you're not gonna be able to save tire and you know, try to be good at the end anymore. That's just going to be an all out brawl for the last 18 laps. And that's what it was. It was, it really was. And, uh, he raced really hard and he was really classy. He, he gave me some really <laughs> nice comments in victory lane and was, um, you know, very, you know, a lot of great sportsmanship there. So, uh, pretty cool to see that. And then the, the crowd's reaction was incredible. I couldn't believe those guys just going nuts, uh, in the stands. They loved it. And, uh, you know, it just really meant a lot to me to just feel loved and, uh, you know, just that they enjoyed what we do because we work so hard at this just for those moments. And uh, it was just really something emotional to take in for uh, for a while there after the race. Definitely. Does One question I really wanted to ask is, does racing with the likes of – Friesen and Shepard and, and Williamson and the rest of the, the the bigger competitive guys in the Super Dirt Car Series and with STSS, does that make you feel like you step up your game when they aren't there? If that makes any sense, I mean, like does it make we go it, hard? We go hard rise every your time. compete level. We go hard oh, every boy. time, but it's uh, it just. <clears throat> What, what happens when they're not there is that you you get those opportunities to save your tires or, or uh, you know, play a little strategy instead of just having to go freaking all out the whole time. You know, you, you wear your stuff out trying to race that hard all the time, you know, every lap. And uh, you can, like, you know, you can chunk the tire and then you're not, you don't have anything left at the end or, uh, you know, start – attacking the corners too hard and, you know, miss a little bit, hit a hole and, and break something. We've had, we had some races we were leading and dropped out because of, uh, you know, having uh, suspension and stuff break because of ruts and holes in the racetrack or whatever. So, you know, when they're not there, kind of gives you the opportunity to kind of just avoid that, those situations and, uh, you know, race a little smarter. I thought I was running a pretty smart race throughout uh, the Albany deal but then when uh, when he starts throwing those Hail Mary sliders at you you got to cross him over and, and do it right back or else you're losing the lead and you're not getting it back so uh it's just part of the deal and it was a lot of fun doing it uh you know great experience for me so I really enjoyed it Mike it We've been seeing you a lot more down here in the Pennsylvania Jersey Delaware region. Obviously, you're a New York boy. What is the biggest difference that you see in modified race between New York and Pennsylvania? That maybe with the Deo series, there's a lot more crossover now, I, I think, than what there was in maybe about 10 years ago, but with Brett's, you know, bringing the North South region together. But where do you think the competition is that you, you you're one of the only guys that really see both North and South region guys. Uh, yeah. Where do you think the competition is between both, both of them uh, lies at right now? The difference is rules. We're in a weird state of, you know, dirt modified racing where I got to have six different motors to race oh. the different events, you know, and, uh, to do that, like to be able to go to Pennsylvania and race, I got to have a, a PA small block and it's a spec motor. It's got pretty good horsepower, but, but not enough to get out of your own way. Like everybody's racing like they're, you know, in a, with a restrictor plate at Daytona, you know, and it, it's very aggressive, not a lot of give and take. Um, it's, 
you know, it's just balls of wall the whole time. Um, then we get in a big block and you're just spinning your tires the whole race. So everybody kind of calms down and thinks about like, well, I got to have some tire at the end here. I got to, I got to play smart. I got to race with a little strategy. So you have a little less contact and it's a little more like, you know, just guys, you know, just racing. Um, and it, but I mean, there's still, it can be contact. It really depends on who you're racing with. But uh, generally, that's just kind of what I see. And uh, I love going to Pennsylvania. It definitely makes me a better driver. It, it makes me race a little more aggressively. And uh, I enjoy um, those tracks. Like, I really love Grandview, uh, Bridgeport. Um, they're just a lot of fun. Um, but then you can you can go to those places and, and uh, come home in a basket, too. So, <laughs> just... Uh, you know, True. it is what it is. So, like, like last week we had a choice of the Freedom 76 or the Fonda 200 or Canandaigua. Obviously, Fonda 200 paid the most, so, like, that made the, that made the decision easier. However, I really think that, like, the Freedom 76 is a very prestigious race that I'd love to be at every year trying to compete and trying to get one of those. And, um, you know, it's tough to decide to go race for a little less and possibly, like I said, come home in a basket where, you know, I know going to the Fonda 200, I'm probably going to be like, you know, I didn't, I barely had a scratch on my car at the end. <laughs> so, uh, you know, that's just the, the difference of the mentality, I guess. Boy. Now, going speaking home of strategy. Wow. <laughs> From PA. How are we feeling rolling into Super Dirt Week here? Because we all know a lot of strategy takes place at that now us we go i mean i i still always think of it as syracuse but how are we feeling rolling into to super dirt week this year i'm feeling pretty good you know i've, I've heard like a lot of people are having a hard time with you know getting stuff cars motors stuff like that and uh you know we have we have the equipment um problem is i'm just trying like crazy in the shop every day trying to get them done and ready beforehand that I, I really don't have a lot of time to think about the actual race because I'm just focusing on hoping that we get there somewhat prepared. Um, you know, once we get to the track, I'm sure we'll have more time to, to do that. And, uh, you know, the other thing is that I've found is these big long races is that you kind of have to just race and, let it play out how it plays and make make that critical decision at the right time if you try to plan it out ahead of time it usually doesn't go the way you think and you can't you just really can't don't have a crystal ball to guess those things so uh it's not like it used to be where the tracks just all took rubber and you know whoever's leading the beginning leading at the end nowadays people are like pitting late put tires on put, you Sailing know drive through the field. it's it makes it a lot more exciting, so it's it's pretty fun to look forward to. And like I said, we have a lot of great equipment, and so I have a lot to be thankful for. Um, it's like uh, I'm also just you know it's a balance of just being a little overwhelmed trying to get it all ready because there's so many races. But it, I, it's my own fault. Like I could skip a race, <laughs> but like I don't want to miss one. I don't want to I don't want to miss an opportunity at another win and, or just another good finish and we've been finishing so well that typically we come home we're coming home with enough money that it's paying the bills so it's just a matter of like having the time to to do all the maintenance and stuff but um you know i'm really enjoying uh being at all the events and being able to compete with freezing and shepherd because they're at basically every event and it, it feels like you kind of need to be there uh racing with them day in and day out or you don't get as good as they do um so that's another reason why I feel like I got to be at them all. Mike, we have, uh, well, I got two more before we let you go here. Uh, we have three 200 lap races coming up here within the next three weeks. What is your expectation in all three of those? I know we're in all different places about um, going, uh, you know, everything going on, you know, between the tire situation. And, and that's another question too, with your, your tire situation going into Super Dirt Week. And then also you got to kind of look at that going into the speed showcase and Eastern States. 
what's a realistic expectation was going on with all that stuff coming here? Uh, <laughs> so there's a few big factors there. Uh, speed showcase, hundred percent going to be an amazing track, amazing race. You can't beat Port Royal. Uh, a huge purse. Can't wait for that event. And as, as well as the others, um, uh, Middletown, Eastern States 200, it, uh, tracks been like all over the place all year. I have no idea what we're going to get for a racetrack. Um, uh, it's might turn into just like survival. Um, and then, uh, Oswego, uh, has been great the past few times they've done it. Uh, but, uh, Eric Kingsley, who did the track, uh, just like announced that he quit the other day. I saw that and stuff. So like, um, that. who knows how that track's going to turn out now without him there. But, um, you know, it's something that, you know, I hope just draws the fans in more to, to see what happens. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll do the best we can. Obviously like when tracks are rough, it's really hard to, to make any money because like, even, you know, even though these big purses, like if you come home, and your stuff's all wore out and broke and it breaks in the next race and takes you out of a race that you could have won a bunch of money, then it ain't really worth it. Um, it's probably smarter to pull in. So it's really important to me. I don't want to sound like a crybaby at all, but like just financially to race for a living, you can't go and race on rough racetracks. It's just not feasible. So, um, you know, hopefully they, they get them nice and I know they're working at it hard and I, you know, I don't want to sound like I'm complaining at all, like I said, uh, but you know, just, uh, you know, I think it's going to be uh, a toss up, like I said, uh, but uh, other than Port Royal, because like Port Royal is just, like one of the greatest tracks in the country. <laughs> I mean, Steinle, I, just, I don't Steinle, know how you beat that. Steinley hits that track every single time and you're not, it, it's yeah. a, it's a valid point that you brought up and, you know, financially, it's very tough to race for a living, but you have to do it smartly if you're going to do it. But uh, hey, buddy, we gotta, we're going to let you go here because we got a iRacing event coming up here at 9 o'clock here in the National Racing Network. But thank you so much for joining us last minute here. Who do you got to thank for your yeah. win on Saturday night? And uh, who's going to help you possibly get in victory lane? Maybe one of these couple uh, 200 lappers we got coming up. Well, I definitely got to thank Adirondack Auto, uh, Marcel's Appliance Center, Hudig Nissan. Tony Monaco Landscaping, uh, Dig Shocks, uh, all of our support, uh, my crew of uh, Art Ballard and Lance Maxson, uh, Rich Lurkies, Doug Emery, um, it's helping me a lot this week, and uh, um, my uh, my car owners, uh, George, Julie Huddig, Charlie Huddig, uh, they're just they're they're all like family to me and they, they really gave me a great opportunity to race a lot and we're doing it. So, uh, things keep getting better and hopefully we can come home with some more wins. Hell yeah, buddy. Hell yeah. Well, best of luck to you coming up here, uh, this weekend and next week at, uh, super dirt week. And I'm sure we'll probably be talking to you at speed show. Okay. Thanks for coming on, man. I appreciate that. Uh, appreciate Fantastic. It a lot, Thank you for having me on guys. Uh, glad you guys are getting this rolling. Uh, hope it goes good for you. Thanks buddy. Appreciate it a lot, man. Talk to you soon. All right, there he goes, folks. Mike Mahaney, uh, good good to have a modified guy back on the show. It's been a while. All right, well, that, that was it on the Frenchburg Eagle Hotline. We have an iRacing event coming up here, but Adam, ask your question. We know where we're going, but ask the second part. Who's it going to be? Who's it going to be? Saturday Chris, night. You start. Yeah, Chris, go ahead. You start. Uh, you're putting me on a spot here. I have not put a Welcome ton of thought show. into this. However, Lance Deweese. He went with the both Olsen nights. He went. No, we're going Saturday night only. Saturday night only. Oh, Saturday night only. Saturday night special, baby. <laughs> um, Brent Marks turns it okay. around. He gets his. He gets his luck. Figured out that he's, you know, he hasn't had the best of luck the last couple of weeks, but uh, I think he turns it around and picks up his second national open victory. Well, that'd be his first as a policy. He won one as an outlaw back in 2019. You know, I talked too much shit on the outlaws to pick an outlaw. 
I would love to see one of the Logan win it. I'd love to see Jacob win it. Donnie's going to be very good on Saturday night. Donnie's going to be very good. You can't count out Gravel. You can't count out Macedo. Sweet. I don't want to say you count him out, but he's not good at the Grove. James McFadden. There's another guy. He has a win at the Grove. But what about an outsider? I may go with an outsider on this one. Giovanni Selzy is going to win the National Open. Hmm. Youngest winner in so, Williams Grove history. He ran very, very well there on Friday night. If he they time trial well, Gio Selzy is going to win the National Open. And go ahead, throw the hate to me in the comments, and uh, I'm not picking positive. No, no, Gio no. Is, no, I mean, it's a very solid pick, to be honest. I mean, he's looked yeah. very fast. He's been consistent the last couple of weeks that he's been in Pennsylvania. So why not? Uh, I, 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 I also, way, I really also, like. Uh, sorry, go ahead. I, I really like Chase's pick. That's a solid pick in the speed lab car. I like Pittman. Yeah, Pittman's been very good at the Grove. Um, I mean, uh, one more here before we go. Our boy Justin Henderson, he's coming in this uh, weekend. He's going to be running the uh, Indy Race. I saw course. that. Yes. I saw so that. We'll have to catch up with Justin at some point, so good on him. Uh, yeah, so that's going to do it for our National Preview Show. Look for our, some wild, fun stuff this weekend here, and I'm sure there's some great stuff coming up on the National uh, Racing Network, Chris. Which that's why we gotta get rushed off the air, Eric, because there is a shit show coming up, right? Uh yeah, there's a dumpster fire train wreck that is about to start qualifying. Uh that one is going to be a ton of fun. The big one this weekend though, the DeWeather Cares Nice Tits Kickball Tournament will be live all day Saturday on the National Racing Network and the DeWeather Center social channels. Uh four cancer related charities will be fundraised for. Come on out to the Emerald Playground Park, whatever it is, Sladington, Pennsylvania. Uh, doing a whole bunch of fundraising. That's going to be as dumpster fire of an event as you could possibly get. Great way to start <laughs> things off before the National Open on Saturday. Absolutely. And, of course, uh, we have uh, at the Grove the Chili Cook-Off on Saturday morning. Uh, come on down, check that out. That starts at 9 a.m. if you're just camping at the Grove. Okay, kickball is at 11. That's always a fun shit show. I mean, I know the kickball tournament you're going to be at is a lot more beneficial, I guess you want to say. that This is just a shit show of drunk people get or people getting drunk and trying to not injure themselves. And Rodney West here for trying not to run into Adam's truck again. I'm calling you out on that one, Rodney. This is true. Just this is true. The new truck this time, folks. But come on <laughs> out Saturday if you're at the Grove or if you're down in the um, Allentown area, Lehigh Valley, go check out the uh, – the Weather Center is nice kickball tournament. Uh, that's a great cause. Peter, uh, it's your fault that the Eagles lost to the Cowboys. So uh, you can kiss my ass on that one. I lost money because of you. Uh, but we're looking at a beautiful weekend from the Weather Center. And that's going to do it for this edition of the High Side Hustle, folks. We'll be live at the Williams Grove Speedway all weekend long with post-race interviews from the Champion Race from National Open. Let's have ourselves a fun weekend. Go Posse. For Big Sexy Adam Rubai, our executive producer, Chris Graham, my name is Burt Wojcik. Keep on hustling, folks. We'll see you guys next week. Enjoy the National Open.